Let's go to Seattle, home of the grunge. Alice in Chains, the Pearl Jams, even the Soundgarden's Chris Cornell, the greatest singer of all time. And talk to Rose. What's going on, Rose? Hi. How are you? I'm good, and you? <laughs> you don't sound good. I'm great. <laughs> I'm sitting in a bunch of snow here in Nashville. How are you? You're not, you're not doing okay? Yeah, I'm just tired. All right. So what's up? How can I help? Well, I was just wondering to what level um, you should change for a partner or how much you should compromise. Ooh, this is a loaded question. So unpack that for me. So, um, well, my boyfriend has been telling me that he wants me to lose weight for him because he wants me to be the best for him, as he says it. And he, he needs to, in order for him to find me more attractive, he wants me to lose the weight. And I don't feel like I should be doing that. But then if I'm asking him to change, like, um, do things without me having to tell him constantly or just put in a little more effort in, into the relationship. I don't know if it's a double standard asking him to change and me not changing. <laughs> so a couple of things. One, I'm just, I'm rarely speechless, Rose, and you made me speechless. So well done. I want to give you a high five on that. Um, that's a brazen man that will look at his... Wife, are y'all married? Girlfriend? Girlfriend. Girlfriend. Look at his girlfriend and say, you need to be the best for me. And um, you're overweight. You're not attractive. Fix it. It's a brazen man. Brazen man. Like where I'm from, you get murdered kind of man. And on the other hand, you ask an interesting question. So you want him to be more emotionally present. And what else? Just be able to do things without me constantly having to tell him to do them. So be invested in the relationship at all. Yeah. Okay. And so are, man, you're asking a great question. So here's what first pops in. Oh, I'm not even going to go there. That's just, I was just going to muddy the waters. All right. So here's, here's the way I think you can think about this. If somebody, let's say my wife, let's say my wife came to me and said, Hey, I need you to lose weight. And I would say, why? And she'd say, well, I've known you for 25 years. And when you get to be this size, whether it's because, you know, you're not working out or you're not eating right or you're lifting a lot, you just get big. I snore or my sleep score goes down or I get a little grumpier or I'm always, she'll notice things like I say, oh, my knees or my back or whatever, my neck hurts, whatever. And she'll say, hey, it's time. And you need to get back on a plan. And she's not saying that because she has suddenly found me unattractive, which is really hard because I'm a smoke show, let's be honest. <laughs> She's saying, for your health and well-being, I love you and care about you so much. I want you to be your best self, and you've given me permission to speak into your life, and I see patterns because I've known you for 25 years. One of your patterns is X, Y, Z, A, B, C. I think it's time. That's different than I don't think you're pretty. And I deserve pretty, so fix it. Do you see how those are the same thing, but different? Yeah. Okay. So one of these is, I want you to lose weight because I want you to feel better. I not I want you to be the best for me, but I want you to be the best for you. I want you to feel good. And that's different than I need you to be hotter. And so... The difference is with, with what you're saying. I love your question, but here's where it's different. Let's look at you and let's look at him and then let's make a triangle with the relationship, okay? So you have the relationship that's separate from both of y'all. Mm -hmm. When you get married, you both agree that we are now becoming a single unit. We are becoming this new thing together. We're, we're fusing together. And this gets lost in all of our cultural talk of marriage. Everybody screwed this thing up. When you're in, you're in. And when you do that, you say, what is the things that are going to better serve this relationship? He is saying, you be hot, not for the relationship, but for me. You are saying, hey, would you engage into this relationship? 
for us. So this whole unit operates seamlessly together with one. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah. The spirit there is so, so different. And so I get that, yes, you're asking him to change. He's asking you to change. But y'all are coming at it for two very different reasons. One is incredibly selfish and demeaning. And the other is trying to find common connection. How do we build an ecosystem where we're both loved and we're both in this thing? Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. How long have you been with this guy? Mm, A little over two years. (sighs) When did this kind of talk start? Um, I would say about six to eight months. Into the relationship or six or eight months ago? Uh, ago. Have you become unhealthy during the pandemic? No, I'm the exact same way I was okay. um, when we met. So what else is going on beneath these two stories? Your relationship is on the rocks. What else is going on? I just feel like I'm not good enough. Well, he tells you that. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. That's why you feel that way. Cause you got somebody that says they love you. And then they tell you, you're not good enough for me. Mm-hmm. It's just confusing. Cause he says he wants to be with me, but I don't understand. I, I tell him it's not, you don't want to be with me. You want to be with a different version of me. And I just don't know what to do. Hold on. Can I say something hard Rose? Yeah. You do know what to do. You also know that it's going to hurt like bloody hell, right? Mm-hmm. You do exactly know what you what to do. And I'm heartbroken for you. You can never do something sustainable over time for somebody else. You got to do it for you. Yeah. And if you need to lose weight, that's a whole other call. But do it for you. Because you want to feel good. And you want to live a long, fun, adventurous life. And when you're 65, you want to roll around on the ground with your grandkids. You don't want to be tied up to tubes and machines and pills your whole adult life. Mm Mm-hmm. And you want to feel good in whatever you want to wear. I mean, there's a hundred million reasons why you lose weight for you. But you don't do it to, for, to please somebody else because you know why? That kind of pleasing is about power. That kind of pleasing is going to move. So let's say you lost a hundred pounds. It would move on to something else. You need to be this way in bed. You need to start doing this. You need to actually start doing that. It will just move because it's not about this one thing. Mm-hmm. Do you have what, what's something you, you want to change? What's something you want to get better at this year, 2022? Not what somebody's told you. What's something you want to grow towards? Um, get better at my job. What's your job? I work in construction. Okay. Are you a baller, dude? A what? I bet you're a boss baller, huh? What do you do in construction? <laughs> Um, I just started, so I just, my goal is just to become more confident. Um, what, do, what do you do out on the site? Um, so I work with concrete, so I pour concrete slab. Yes, dude. I told you, you're a gangster, man. <laughs> so are you going to get better this year? How are you going to get better? Um, work more, and I just need to be more confident okay. and standing up for what I know yep. I should be doing. So, yeah. Confidence comes from when you, when you are able to, we, we, we live in a culture that says you just need to be confident. No, dude, our bodies know, and we're not telling the truth. I can get up in front of a bunch of people and say, I'm going to dive off this high dive and do a triple double flip. I just need to be confident. My body knows we're about to splat. Confidence comes from a series of little and increasingly bigger wins. 
I'm confident enough I played that whole song in my basement. Now I'm confident enough to play it in front of my kids. And now I'm confident enough to play it at practice. And now I'm confident enough to play that song on stage. Mm -hmm. And you're exactly right. Work more. I wish there was another way around it, but you're exactly right. You got to practice concrete work over and over and you're going to screw stuff up and people are going to go like, what are you doing? No <laughs> girls allowed. And you're going to be like, I'm freaking Rose, the concrete sorcerer. And you're going to, I don't even know if that's a thing. Is there such a thing as a concrete sorcerer? Probably not, but you're going to crush it. And can I tell you something that kind of breaks my heart and kind of fills my heart at the same time? What? I want you to go back and listen to this audio when the show comes out. Talking about this guy who has beat you down and told you that you're not good enough for him. Your voice has a particular tone, a weight to it, a heft to it, a sadness to it. And when you started talking about concrete work, you cheered up. You've got joy in your heart about that. And that's awesome. That's awesome. You are worth being loved, Rose. Do you believe that? I'm trying to. I'm not, I never lie to somebody on the show. Never going to lie to you. You are worth being loved. You're also worth feeling good. You're also worth having great physical health, okay? Mm -hmm. But you're worth being loved for you. Now, if he comes to you and says, hey, I'm a complete idiot. I said this wrong. I screwed up. I don't know what's going on. COVID mess got me nuts. I've been locked down for two years here in, in Seattle. Like, listen, I'm sorry. I want you to feel so good. And it, our relationship will grow if I feel good, if you feel good, if we're both working towards goals that we both, that's a whole different conversation about weight. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. So I'm not going to make you say it out loud on this on the radio. You've got a series of hard choices ahead of you, right? Yeah. Do y'all live together? We do. Okay. You got a hard series of, of decisions to make. Do you have a girlfriend that you can sit down and talk to that walks alongside you through this? Yeah, I do. Good. What do they tell you? Basically the same thing. You know why? Because I love you. Because you're worth being well. And you're worth being loved. Okay? Yeah. I'm grateful for you, Rose. I know this is a hard call. 